you know, but the question that you ask, I always tell my kids, because my kids are start driving right now. Okay. And my biggest fear is my kid having an accident with a motorcyclist. Okay. Because I'm a rider. Right. You know, so I always encourage the customers or encourage the people out there. The way you play, like whenever you see a buggy, you hit somebody, hey, buggy, or doing like that stuff, why do you start counting, hey, there's a motorcycle, hit somebody, you know? Welcome back to the Beard Bros Podcast. Hope you guys are having a good day. Before you get started, please like and subscribe. Get us to 500 before our 100th video. We really do appreciate it. Again, they are still selling the Support Local Roswell, New Mexico t-shirts. Our logo's in the back amongst 14 other companies locally owned. Go support them, 18 and $22. Variety of colors, pick a size. I think it takes a couple of days. You even get this cool little box. I thought it was cool. It had like an alien with like a like a flatbread sandwich in its hand. It was cool art. I mean, go cop a shirt, do what you do. Also, we want to, you know Blackhawk, C.V. Harris, he's been on here. He's let us do a food review at the Blackhawk Brewery. He's a big supporter of us as well as we are of him. They recently got robbed. So if you guys can, you know, they have the, what are they called? Oh, uh, they're like slushies or cider slushies. Pineapple, watermelon, uh, two other ones. There's two other flavors. You could go in there if it's a hot day. It's a slushy with alcohol in it. It's to go. You could also get beer to go. Help them out. They have a food truck. Hook them up. Help them out. Shop local. There you go. Today's guest, long-time friend of mine. We met at Home Depot. Now here we are. Whoa, What's going whoa, on, Jorge? Don't say that much, shit on my Don't say that shit on my part. Oh, shit. <laughs> ah, you damn, nothing. We're not promoting. It's just that's how we met, man. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. That was a long time ago. Shit, I think that was... I'm not gonna lie. That was probably like ten years ago. It was probably like (laughs) eighteen. Easy. Yeah, that was a long time. How you been, dude? Good, man. How you? I'm doing good. So I see you got a cut. Yeah. How long you been riding for? Since I started, probably in Mexico around legally, not legally, but in the streets, around twelve, thirteen years old. Wow. I'm 40 years old. Okay. Don't get me wrong. My grade doesn't fucking say justice, but I'm 40 (laughs) years old. So, almost basically 30 years of riding. Yeah, around that. Around that. Did you start off with the Harley? Oh, no. 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 Nobody started. Like a dirt bike or something. It took me freaking, I was 32 years, 31 years before I got my first Harley. Wow, really? Was that your dream motorcycle? I think that's everybody's dream. You start, you start here, then your, your, you know, your goal is to get a Harley. Okay. Over there in Mexico, I was like, we build bikes with parts of Harleys and try to make them look chopper, kind of Harley looking. But you know, you work yourself up. It's it's hard to have a Harley. It's expensive, and and they're expensive. You just need it's it's like a luxury. Right. Yeah, it is, it's an expensive hobby, yes. that's for sure. Yeah, I owned a Harley, an 05 Softail Heritage. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have it no more, but even when I had it, it was expensive. Yeah. I'm like, uh, you got to be dedicated. So who do you ride for? Uh, I ride with a motorcycle group called Guerreros. Okay. That means warriors in Spanish. Warriors. Okay, and how long have you guys been... We established in 2008 in Roswell. Okay. We uh, we started here in Roswell in 2008. Okay. So it's almost 12 years. So November will be 12 years. Wow. And how does something like that get? How do you get started? Like, it's 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 hard. It's it's hard to start clubs. You know, uh, you go by rules and regulations. Uh, you 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 have to make a group. You know, you make your own group of whatever number is and start hanging out, make sure that that's gonna be called your brothers and and hang out and you can trust them the way they trust you. Eventually, you know, you got six, seven, eight, whatever number it is, and then you go by rules to try to ask permission to to open a club and then start writing. And we do a lot of charities for the, for, for the Roswell community. We've done toy runs, we've done uh, bike blessings, we've done 
you know, birthday parades right now is, is the popular thing to do. Uh, as soon as somebody tells us, invite us to something, we'll try to help. Uh, we try to help the community as much as we can. Okay. Take that bad image of the biker world to, to the new image. Okay. How did, how did, like, you say you had to get permission to become a club, like what? what it's just, you got place? different dominated clubs, you know, you got, um, diff I cannot mention names, but you got different, should I say, ranks of different clubs and, and everything has to be uh, by protocol, you know, you don't want to jump somebody's gun and, and you try to be the big guy and not, you know, small guy. Everybody here is, is to ride and have fun. But of course, you still got your dominated clubs in, in around the area. Oh, okay. See, my boss, <coughs> he's part, well, I think he was, he was a, I think the president of VL, it's in Artesia. They're like a Christian. Los club. Perdonados. Yeah, that's <laughs> who it is. That's who it is. So he was the president. Are, you're the president, right? Uh, I'm the, the, they call it the club president. It's okay. just because we carry different chapters. Okay. So I kind of like not be the, I don't like to call it the main guy, but I kind of like supervise the chapter in Roswell. We got a, a president here in Roswell. Okay. That takes care of the whole Roswell area. Okay. And I got a president in El Paso that takes care of all El Paso. Oh, wow. And they just inform me what's going on in the chapter, and I just observe it and, and just have a good time. Okay. Yeah, see, in my boss, nice. he, he was, he was, and then he stepped down. I think he was, he wasn't getting the cooperation from the club members. And so he felt like being up there wasn't as important anymore. And he had been writing for several, several decades, I feel like. And so... But he told us, like, yeah, you got to ask for permission. And sometimes when you go places, like, some people don't want you there, I guess. Is that still of the norm? It, you have to be careful where you go because, like I said, different dominated clubs are different areas. Okay. So if you're, if you're around this dominated club and you go to a different, let's say, state, and there's a different dominated club, they don't know that you exist. So they don't know that you belong in a group or something. You go to their territory or to their area, but uh, it's, it's hard to recognize you as a group because you're not around that area. So mm -hmm. sometimes we call a protocol check and, and if, if the nominated club that you belong here has connections or has uh, phone calls or phone numbers, they just call it. You know, this group is going your route, you know, just they're good people, you know, they're just going to go ride, you know, and come back. So it's kind of like a pro coach chick. Okay. Oh, that crazy. makes sense. It's crazy, though, but how territorial some places It's are. more for your safety. You know, you're, you're on a motorcycle, and anything can happen. Okay. A deer can jump on you, a flat tire, broken chain. My brother from, from Clovis just got a broken chain last week, you know, and... If, if you know the people around that area, mm -hmm. you can make a phone call and they're going to help you out. Okay. The biker world, excuse me, the biker world is, is a lot of help. You know, it doesn't matter where you go. If you, if you know the right people, they're going to go help you to put you in the road again. To be safe and you can come back home safe. Okay. How does somebody get into a, like a, your, your club specifically? Um, my specific club, you just need to hang out with us for a little bit. You know, we, they got different stages. You got the hang around part. You know, you come and hang out. Let's say Joel wants to join. You know, get your bike, start hanging out. See if this is what you want to belong to. See if you fit with the group. See if you get along with all the person, you know, all the people that's in the club. Mm -hmm. Then you go to a different stage. You go to the pro, uh, prospect stage. But I always tell my friends, because there's plenty of clubs in town. There's since I, since I started in 08, there's, I'll say probably 10, 12 different clubs in town. Oh, wow. So there's always people say, hey, you know, my club or your club or this club or this and that. You know, I always tell whoever wants to hang out with us, you know, you, you probably know a lot of people in Roswell, you grew up here. You probably have friends in different clubs. Go and chill out with them for a little bit. Go and chill out with the other group. Go and chill out with the other group. Then go and chill out with us. That way, you're going to find out which one you fit better. Who, who is the one you feel more comfortable and this and that. That way you're not a, what they call it, hood hoppers. Okay, yeah. You know, that way you, whenever you join something, you be loyal to that club 
and and you try to do everything for that club so you can be a good brother but because a lot of people right now there's a lot of clubs they just they just want to give you and sometimes we don't explain or they don't explain what's going on they go from this to this to this to that so you know we don't want that because then it creates a little friction and with the club being together we make good events we help the community more so that's why in my hangarounds I always tell them, you know, try to go different groups. You don't have to commit to them, just go and hang out and see which one you feel better. That way you uh, put your seat there, yeah. should I say it. Yeah. You, you stay in that and not be going, you know, everywhere. Is it frowned upon to basically do that? Like to like say I, I was hanging out with you. And I'm like, yeah, I want to join your gang or your club. Not gang. Not gang. <laughs> club. I want to join you your gang. discuss that. No <laughs> gang. No gang. Not gang. Just, if I want to join your club and I was like, hey, you know, I'm down, you know, let's do the prospect thing and I do the whole thing. But then, I don't know, let's say Joe Blow over here is cool guy. He comes in and he's like, yeah, I'm, this seems pretty cool. And I decided to, how does that work? Like, am I just going to be like, peace to you guys or what? How does that work? Um... <laughs> Basically, that's it. You know, I don't have to like exit out. Like have a, like, you don't beat them like a pinata. No, no, <laughs> you, don't, you know, that's that's the part with the freaking sons and anarchy and Maya and shit say. like that. And, you know, the government puts in people's mentality. No, it's it's not like that, bro. It's like okay. this is what we try to do as a brotherhood, a bond between each other. You know, you help you. I don't know what kind of business you do, but if I know my circle, I can help you as a friend, as a family. I'll send business your way. It's like I told my brothers, if you know somebody is a plumber, it's in business to that brother because he's, he's helping his family and he's helping his as a man. Okay. So we try to help each other. It's like a circle. It's like a, whenever you're in high school, it's like a fraternity. Okay. You know, we try to build that bond. Sometimes it doesn't go no, that way because sometimes people say, oh, this grass is greener this way. And a lot of people are rumors and this and that. It's, it's weird how you join a group and... Then you lose friends and you gain friends and, you know, jealousy and they want to be like you or whatever. It changes a lot of mentalities. But at the end, it's a brotherhood that we're trying to make. And if you go out, that's that's on your own. We're not going to beat you out. We're not going to take your bike. You know, the only thing is that we do collect this. Everything that was property of us, like everything that says Guerreros, it comes back to us. Okay. Because then you decide to leave us to go somewhere else okay so you, you what do you want a guerrero had if you're gonna be working with so and so right it's like i said i always tell my 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 brothers i said why do you want to be in this business let's say uh whatever name is you know dj and then you're gonna be dj in this party and you got a different hat of dj you know you're not gonna represent two different names you know right so Everything that belongs to Guerreros, it comes back to us. Okay. That's okay. that's the biggest deal. So only only guys could join the club. Uh, in our group, yes, we only only guys can do our group. Um, if you have a significant other like your wife or your girlfriend, we do have a patch of our respect that you know they know that is it, it's it's part of you. That way, whenever because whenever we do biker events, it's like humongous parties. You you can have anywhere from a hundred people to two three hundred people. So, whenever you have a, a significant other, say your wife or your girlfriend, you can have a patch that says uh, uh, "Get it, so lady." Oh, that means that that's lit. yeah, that means that it's a uh, it's part of you. Okay, so okay, with that patch, a lot of a lot of the biker community they know hey. You know, I'm not gonna flare with that chick because it's it's pro it's it's not we don't call it property, but it's it's part of a, a, a member of a lady of member, you know. So it's kinda like a little respect deal right. and a kinda little of boundaries. Because you got your friends they you know they wanna party and this and that. If if they don't have nothing like that, you never know. You know, they might go with so and so or they might go party with so and so. So but if it's a, a family even your kids like we have a church even says family of Guerrero, you know, even your kids, because we bring the kids to the parties, depending on what kind of party we're going to go. So we bring the kids, we bring the family, we bring the girlfriends. Uh, so it's it's kind of like a bond. 
See, we need a patch like that. <laughs> so if they break up, you gotta collect that patch, yeah, right? You gotta get that back. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, of course. Yeah, of course. It's like you're not part yeah. of the stuff. Yeah, you're not. You're not. You don't belong to him no more. So. Yeah, sorry. I gotta get. But you're still invited, but you don't get the patch. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Nah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Beer Bro is like. Slut. So they're gonna do like Beer Bro slut. Like uh, we're gonna have a biker club. <laughs> no, just like. Patches for chicks. Just patches. We're just gonna get patches. Just gonna get no, that's cool. I, like I that. do have a question. So, you mentioned Sons of Anarchy, Mayans, and all that stuff. You get that. What is that? It's a motorcycle TV series. TV series. Okay. So they have the perception of like a prospect having to do like all the dirt, like all this like weird killing like, and not well, get not killing, really, but like they they put them. It's almost like hazing when you're like. You the like the freshman or rookie on a football team or something like you're gonna have to do jokes things. and stuff. Yes, like you're getting made fun of. I'm gonna make you carry my helmet and pads. Is it describe how you guys deal with the prospect? Are you like are you testing him? I would say no, it's not a test. It's just like to us, it's like fun to have fun with it. Okay, brother. like you and the football. Okay. It carry my helmet, bro. It's right. like we're not gonna tell a prospect to do something we haven't done as a okay. member. So we're not gonna disrespect the man. Right. You know, we're not gonna tell him, Hey, go beat up so and so so you can earn your patch. No no no. That's in the movies and that's in the like the series. Okay. Uh but a lot of people get that perception of like, Oh, I'm gonna have to do that. A lot of people are afraid of bikers, first of all. Yeah. A lot of people are afraid of cuts. A lot of people are afraid of even trying to join a club because they've seen all these TV shows and it's like, I ain't gonna do that. It's like, I ain't gonna do that. I always tell my prospect, well, you're not gonna do nothing that I haven't done. Okay. You know? I'm not gonna tell you to go rob a bank if I haven't done it. So, I'm not gonna put you in jeopardy to, to take care of your family just because of this. No, no, it's nothing like that. You know, we try to make it fun for them. You know, we try, yeah, sometimes we push them here around. But we need to make sure that they're gonna be bond with the group. It's like a little prospect here. It's like a prospect time, so they can see if they can bond with us. Okay. You know, it's not more. It's not necessary to uh, disrespect them because we don't want to do that. But it's like a little time to see if they're willing to join our club. Oh, uh, okay. I see what you're saying. Like y'all go and get, y'all get car washes. Y'all make them like, wash the bikes or something. Well, sometimes we, you know, simple task, you know, hey, you know, bro, we, we're having a good party, can you go get beer? Okay. You know, oh, okay. it's like nothing else that we haven't done. It's like no, you guys, I, whenever you were in the football, hey, bro, I forgot my clits in the locker, you, you know, you're the newest one, can you go get them? Right. Simple stuff simple like that. Simple stuff, but nothing, uh, nothing like good and great. No, yeah, nothing degrading. that they're going to degrade the person or okay. disrespect them. Okay. Cool. Like I said, I'm not going to do nothing that I haven't done. I'm not going to ask you to do something that I haven't done. Okay, and typically, how long? Uh, and I'm sure it probably varies, but is there? Do some prospects take longer than others, or is yeah. that a determination? I don't know. It's just, of course, it's a goal by time frame. You know, it all depends on what kind of work you do. You know, if you're in the oil field and you you were part of the oil field kind of gas companies before, sometimes you can be in the boonies for three months before you come back. Right. So how are we gonna count that you were around us if you're gone for three months, you know? So it, it depends how much time you spend with the brothers, how much time you get to know the brothers, mm -hmm. so you can earn that patch quicker. Okay. So it all goes by time frame. So uh, okay. if I see you only once a year, but you're gonna take 10 years, you know? Yeah, basically at that point, <laughs> you're gonna be like, maybe this, I'd probably suggest, like, you probably do it, you probably sit them down like, hey man, maybe this isn't for you. Yeah. Do you have people that just hang out with you probably for a long time? But oh, yeah, yeah. We got people that they've been with us uh, two, three years, okay. and they never join the club. Do they okay. pass as, like, friends of the Guerreros? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> they just hang out with us. <laughs> 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 we yeah, but they don't, they don't receive a cut. Are they allowed to ride with you guys? Yeah, they ride with, they ride with us on the line. Okay. They go with the cookouts. They, they do everything with us. It's okay. just they don't want that responsibility to me it's a responsibility to me right. it's like a uniform uh they might not be good with the rules or regulations that we may have 
and they should like to hang out with us. Okay. And nothing wrong with us. Not that that's a good deal because whenever you're ready, you're gonna tell us. It doesn't matter if it's two years, five years, but whenever you're gonna be ready, I think you're gonna be more solid than the guy that just got a bike and said, "I want to ride at the club." And he don't know in nothing. Within like a year. Yeah, and he's in like let's say he's in in eight months, but he didn't took the time to go to everything to to get to know all the details like prospect or hang around or get to know all the brothers in the, in the club you know the, because some some clubs they have they may have 10 people some clubs may have 2,000 people you know right. so how in the way you're gonna join something that you don't do your research or or you haven't know what's going on with that right people really have 2,000 people in a club sure, sure. there's clubs worldwide out there. how many clubs how many people are in your club uh, I cannot discuss numbers, but we have a chapter in Roswell, <laughs> and we have a chapter in El Paso. There you go. Okay, okay I respect that. Oh, oh well, when they, when they say pocos pero locos. <laughs> what did you say? That's okay. <laughs> it's so, a comment description. Tell me what he just said. Pocos pero locos. <laughs> so, I'm curious, though. Okay, so can you join without having a bike? Can I have a four-wheeler? Uh, right. Negative Ghost Rider? So you got to have, it's got to be a two-wheel bike. Can it be a tri-bike? Oh, no, it can be a tri. It can be a custom bike. It can be a homemade bike. So you don't have to have a Harley, per se. Not in my group. Okay. There's a lot of groups out there that that you do have to have an American made. It doesn't okay. have to have a Harley. It can be an Indian or it can be a chopper that's ba- built in, Amer- in America. Okay. So some, some stipulation change depending on the group you want to go. Uh-huh. Like in my group... It don't matter what kind of bike you ride. Okay. Don't ride a moped. It's going to go 20 miles Hold an on, hour. Does that mean I can have, like, I don't know what the right specification <coughs> is, but, like, say I have what they call, like, a ninja, like a sport bike. Am yeah. I, I could be in a group even with that? Yeah. Oh, that's... I mean, it's cool that you do that. I just, I guess I never thought that you could do that. And our point of view is, like, a lot of people can have four Harleys. You know, like right. we were telling earlier. That's a luxury. That's... That's like the, the ultimate to go right here. So if you start here, why should I stop you to ride with us? Right. Okay. Um, that's, that's a good cool. way. That's a better way of putting in, it. In my opinion, why should I stop you? Because you ride whatever brand it is, and it's not a Harley. You know, sometimes you can be a... Uh, you have the mentality you're being more humble that you, you grew up in Hondas or Suzuki's or Yamaha's or Kawasaki's, whatever, but you grew up as a humble brother the the guy who has a Harley that he thinks is rich, you know, uh-huh. it's like it to me it doesn't matter. To okay. me, what it matters is the the energy and the input you have for the club. Okay. You know, it's like the loyalty you have. Yeah. Okay. Kind of sort of. Okay. That's just crazy. Just it is crazy. That. Like I feel like we're just barely touching the brink of it because I feel like there's still so much. I have to go. It's- Hang, be one of those hangout guys. Or well, you can go for years just hanging around and still not know everything. That's what I'm saying. There's so much, well, I, like... I guess I'm about to get a bike. <laughs> in order to... I'll help you with that, too. To be in a, a club, in a group, because... I don't know. There are so many groups, and I feel you guys do get a bad reputation, and I'm not sure why. Why like, not just his group? I, maybe nice. back in the day it was worse. I would feel like like back in I don't know how far back probably like seventy. Probably talking about the sixties and seventies. Yeah, like there were people who were coming from the the wards. You know, they were they want to feel that rush, and uh, they they start joining clubs and they say, you know what, we gotta do whatever we wanna do. You know, but now these days it's hard. It's hard to be in a group. It's hard to be in a club. Uh, we just wanna enjoy riding mm-hmm. and having a good time. And if you start thinking about it, if it was not for motorcycle clubs, a lot of charities that we do in town, they were not backed up. You know, who, who helps the, we do a bike blessing and we tried to hit like a local charity. Okay. Like last time we helped uh, a, a boxer by the name of Smokey, okay. uh, Denisha Gonzalez. Yeah, 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 uh, you probably know her. She's been a female boxer in town. So we did a, a run, we call it Bike and Blessing. We meet somewhere in Sam's. We go all the way to downtown, a little parade. We hit the church, the oldest church in town, uh, San Juan, San John's here in town. One of the oldest church tried to help them out too with some money, you know. And then whatever we collect, 
we gave it to the the charity we picked. A lot of a lot of times we picked a uh, cancer charity. Okay. Uh, I lost one of my brothers in a motorcycle accident, and before he before whatever happened in the accident, he was thinking about doing a cancer run to help people with cancer. Oh, wow. So because he couldn't accomplish that because of his accident, so we do the walk for hope. Okay. So as a club, we do shirts. We've been selling shirts lately. Uh, if you go to any Guerrero Facebook, uh, we sell shirts. So right now with the with what's going on with the COVID, uh, we couldn't do a, a whole you know party to collect money, but we still uh, sold shirts. And whatever we collect that, we just write a check on his name to honor his uh, his you know his uh, memory. And we gave a check last year. We gave a check for, I think it was six or seven hundred dollars. The year prior was a hundred dollars less. So we tried to increment every year a hundred dollars extra. Okay. So that's our goal. So the first year we started was five hundred. The next year six hundred. The, the following year seven hundred. So we tried to increase that. Okay. And uh, we held uh, CYFD. You know the kids. Mm -hmm. We did a car wash on Main Street. We raised so much money. We buy supplies for them, you know, uh, whatever they need. You know, you don't want to see your kid being away in a, you know, plastic Walmart bag. You know, we bought duffel bags. We bought, you know, sanitation stuff, you know, deodorants, whatever they need. We try to help the community. And we've done the toy run for 12 years coming up in November. We're going to do another toy run. All that goes to CASA. Okay. So the foster kids, uh, you know, everything, it goes to them. So we try to be helping a lot, of, a lot of the community. And a lot of people don't see that. They only see the bad part. Oh yeah, they're drinking and driving, or they're at the bar, you know, playing pool or trying to act all tough. We don't do that. We just try to have a good time, you know, biker related stuff, playing pool, drinking a beer once in a while. But at the end, we help the community. We help where we live. Yeah. Uh, so that's why we try to give it back to the okay. community. I like your club. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, that that's a good. Th I'm glad you said that because I feel like a lot of people lose that. They don't see that, like you said, and so they lose. They have what they've already made up in their mind as an uh, an opinion on motorcyclists. Yeah, I feel like it's like like how he always says, you, people like eat with their eyes before they eat. It's like people don't really realize how cool bikers could be. Like and what else goes all into it? Because, see, yeah. it, uh, until you mentioned that, I would have not known what all you guys do. Behind the camera, he was calling it a gang. You don't even know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I said it a couple times on here. That's what I mean is. Like, even him being a biker himself, he, he didn't and see, know but, all of it. See, but I would have considered myself as an independent rider. Yes. Oh, because sure, yeah. you... You ride alone, or maybe it's you and maybe one or two Double other people. With no, club no cut, but you also don't like rock anything either, right? That's yeah. kind of like an unspoken rule. So yeah. you can't rock a vest with anything on. No, well, you can rock a vest. You can you can buy a, a plain Jane vest and start putting. You know, I went to Sturgis. I went to Rideau. So yeah. as long as you don't put any uh, anybody else ex insignia, then you'll be okay. You know, show me your boobies, or you know, uh, I'm a I'm a I'm a bad person whenever I drink. I don't care what patches you wear, yeah. but as long as you don't put you know somebody else's stuff on your cut, then you're not gonna be in trouble. That's right. How many vests and, you got this one? Uh, we carry two. We got this summertime because fucking in the summer having leather, <laughs> you sweat your back and that. everything. I was thinking that shit too, bro. <laughs> Like, how do they do it in summertime? Like, just shirtless? Like, are they tatted? No. Just with, just I, 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 I do have a tattoo on my back. I was going to say, you get tanned as hell yeah. when you wore out shirtless all the time. Yeah, that'd be crazy. That'd be sick. No. Yeah, so we carry this, what we call a summer, summer uh, vest, like a jean vest, you know, make it old school. If you've seen all the movies out there, uh, Micro World, since, since the 60s, they were carrying jean. Right. So I keep it, try to keep it traditional. Okay. Then uh, we got a leather one for the winter time because it protects more. It gives you, it keeps you more warm and all that. Especially if an accident happens, it protects more than a jean. But I do have. If I want to go right now around the block without a shirt, 
I do have my logo in my back, so it's it's I'm okay. Oh, there you go. That's a good. That's See, a good. I'm, I'm gonna get my my logo off. <laughs> <laughs> on your back? Nah, hell no. You can be shirtless. Somewhere, somewhere you can see it. Because I don't take my shirt off. Oh, that's too funny. Put it in my hands. But no, yeah, I feel like you can... you're right. I mean, there's so many. I don't know what to. to yeah, like there's a lot that a lot of people don't know, though. That's oh, what, yeah, I guess yeah, what yeah. I'm getting at is. Unless, until people actually either see it for themselves, they won't know, but they have that perception of you guys of being the tough guys, being the guys that are going to go break the rules and do shit. And I'm like, I've not ever really seen that personally. I'm never, like, I think if something does happen, you guys are there for that person. But, I mean, that's just, it's just like if something happened to you, not because you're, my like you're not in a gang we're not in a club we're not in a group but you're, you're my defending. brother yeah you're my brother i'm gonna help defend you like if there's multiple well, people how many times did a high school fight with another high school exactly because a football game or a soccer game or gymnastics or whatever you know <laughs> yeah they fight in gymnastics i'm trying to get them to that shit. but you're right it's just it's the way the world works when it comes to being physical with someone else yeah so that part you i mean i'm sure there's people that have never been a part of anything like that but they've been in a fight and they've had people have their back vice versa and it's just something you don't even know who's fighting you just want to jump in and help somebody yeah exactly it's that's just, how i am Yo, i see my homies fight i just want to punch one of the other guys <laughs> so i got a good question because we've not had anybody on here that rides motorcycles like you do I want to know from your point of view, because you're probably a daily rider for the most part, what is something that you think could be implemented to help safe ride? Because I feel like that's important. Like, people don't watch all the time for you guys. I know you guys try to get, like, loud pipes to emphasize, like, hey, we're coming. We're right here on your left or your right. What's something that maybe no one's done yet that you would like to see maybe implemented? You know what? Um... There's a guy by the name of Willie in Las Cruces that he's a rep a representative for the state. He goes to he goes to a conference and all that to try to see what the laws in and very good friend as he's a writer. Uh, so he's trying to keep us updated in the laws. A lot of times they want to pass a law that hey wear your helmet. Sometimes that's that's supposed to be an option for you, mm-hmm. you know. But the question that you ask, I always tell my kids because my kids are start driving right now okay and my biggest fear is my kid having an accident with a motorcyclist okay because i'm a rider right you know so i always encourage the customers or encourage the people out there the way you play like whenever you see a buggy you hit somebody hey buggy or doing like that stuff why do you start counting hey there's a motorcycle hit somebody you know Uh pay attention to bikes because we don't do that and the way you can you can cover a bike if you're in an intersection let's say you're right here in this intersection and you see a bike cross the street and the other intersection going the opposite way you can cover the bike just with your thumb if you close your eyes like right now i'm doing to the camera you close your eyes and you can cover the whole bike right so that's how unprotected we are okay the bikers is is not to be seen you see you know, loud cars, you see the low riders, you see, you know, big semis or the sport bikes, you know, swing by, passing by. You see the Harleys all with the noise. Sometimes a lot of people don't have noise on their Harleys right. or different pipes. But I encourage people to say, hey, if you see a bike, you know, hit somebody. Hey, like you play with the with the buggies or with the Volkswagens or yeah. whatever. Hey, buggy, boom, you hit you. Yeah. You know, sometimes I'm riding with my daughter and the buggy and she slapped me. The f- what happened there, you know? Oh, there's a buggy there. Try to do that with motorcycles. So okay. you can start putting in your back of your mind, there's bikes out there. Because a lot of people don't 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 say, hey, pay attention to bikes. Every time they, they teach you, hey, you're going to ride, pay attention to the intersection, pay attention to cars. But nobody mentions bikes. And bikes are minimum space. You don't see them. You can blink of an eye and you're not going to see them. Right. A truck, a car, you'll be able to see them from far away. A bike... If you blink, they're right there. Yeah. So I always tell, encourage, like my kids, I said, hey, man, let's play a game. If we're going on a trip or we're going downtown or we're going to Walmart, let's see if you can count how many bikes you see. That way they can put it in the back of their mind to start looking for bikes. 
to start looking for motorcycle riders. It doesn't have to be in a club. It doesn't have to be a certain specific type of bike, but look for riders. Because a lot of people, they use that as a transportation. Mm -hmm. Scooters, you know, people that have no licenses, people that have whatever. There's certain engine size that you can still have a, it's unfortunate to say, but a DWI, mm -hmm. and you can ride a 50cc scooter because it's still legal. So that can be a transportation for somebody to go to groceries or to go to their job right. and not lose their job. So I always say, you know what, instead of looking for buggies, look for bikes. Okay. That way you put it in your back of your mind. Okay. That's a good idea because I never really pay attention, like, not pay attention, but like I never like really notice bikes until they're like, like you said, right, right next to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and when I rode, I won't say I rode in fear, but I guess in a sense almost because I, in the back of my mind, it always ran like, I'm not just riding by myself. I'm having to, I felt like I always had to drive for others. So at any intersection or coming up at a light or even on the on the freeway or highway, you're, you're constantly like watching everybody. And it's a lot, it's a lot to do. It's almost, to me, I had only rode for a couple of years and that was the, literally the only time I ever got on a motorcycle and rode a motorcycle consistently. And to me, it was mentally exhausting after I rode because I was constantly like boom, 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 like playing it well ahead of time just to make sure like I was okay. And so that's why I had that question is because I feel like that's something that never really gets spoken about, like you yeah. mentioned. You have to ride in the defensive part. Like you have to ride like a ride like me. Uh, I tried to ride like nobody sees me. Okay. Like, I got hit in Juarez in a normal street, like your normal second street, let's say. Okay. And somebody didn't stop in a stop sign and hit me. So from Shit. there, it's in your mind that, you know, every intersection, even if you see the car park, I tried to see the wheels or I tried to try to see the face right now with this new tinted and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's hard to see the person, but you focus on the wheels. If you, they start moving, I hunt the horn, rev the engine or something so they can see me because I got hit like that. But as a driver, as a rider, you have to always be in the defensive part. Like, let's say, act like nobody sees you. That way you can be more more of a safe rider. Okay. No, that's a good way of putting it, too. Yeah, you, you have to do those things. It's it's amazing feeling. I'm not going to lie. Like It's like probably one of the most exhilarating feelings to be on that bike. Mm -hmm. And just, even if you're just cruising, like, I was talking to a friend the other day and we were talking about how even like driving towards like the pecan orchards out there oh, yeah. it, it gets so cool because they water and it's shaded it it feels different it smells different being on a bike compared to like being downtown is like kind of hot because cars are constantly on the road it's constantly it's getting the, the pavement's getting warm yeah. off everybody driving like there's so many different elements when you're driving like from here to Artesia on the highway, it's different because now it's open field and the wind is different. So you yeah, kind of, and then if you have like a semi pass by you, you feel those little bitty gusts here and there. It's just, that world is so different. Yeah. But it's, a, it's I get why people ride. To me, it's a getaway. To me, it's like a, a relax of being free. Okay. You know, you your stress of work, your stress of this COVID nineteen, you know, whatever happened in the world, you jump in the bike because you're so concentrated on the road, the elements, the wind. You forget everything. You forget about the problems you may have in the house. You forget about the problems you may have with the boss at work. You forget everything. To me, it's a different. It's like a therapy. It's like a re, you relax. Once you go back, it's like, okay, back to normal. But you jump in the bike and just, you feel free. You you don't feel no pain. You don't feel no freaking, you know, drama. You don't feel that, oh, you owe so much money here. You owe so much money there. You forget about stuff. Then whenever you go back, you go back to reality. <laughs> shit. Uh, we go You're back like, to reality. Shit. Fine. Can, I see, can I keep in the bike 24-7? <laughs> <laughs> How many, how long do you ride? Like, do you ride a lot during the day? Or um, like, right now, I just came back from a, a riding with, uh, there's a female club in town. They uh, call Guerrilla. 
uh, that means militia in Spanish. Okay. So uh, we went riding with my old folk, my dad. He rode with the club too. So we just took out, you know, to Dexter, to fucking the lakes, come back. We went to Darby Road. We stopped at a restaurant here in town and, and helped the local business. Okay. You know, and then I just came here. Like sometimes you can ride anywhere from 20 miles to 100 miles. I got friends that ride 10,000 miles, you know, they ride 5,000 miles. It all depends of, to me it all depends of where you want to go, how much time you have off, how much money you got to spend because it's expensive, you know, gas, hotels or whatever depending where you want to go, and just availability, how much time you have, you know, you can my longest trip in my in my career, should I say, in my motorcycle life is, I went from here in Roswell, all the way to a town called Parral, Chihuahua, in Mexico. So, I think wrong trip, it was like eighteen to nineteen hundred miles, but it took like three days to we, get there and come back. Or yeah, just to I took, get there. No, to to get there and come back. We we I spent a week on the road. Uh, so it was like we took off. I think we took off here on a Wednesday. The party was Friday, Saturday. Then we came all the way back on Sunday. Yeah, it was like three, four days. But I, I have friends in different clubs. They have, they have taken trips for ten thousand miles in seventeen, eighteen days. So that's almost. Oh my gosh. That's almost living in the bike. Yeah. So it all depends <laughs> of what do you want to do as a rider. Okay. Or, or 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 what's the goals? Because there's there's people that just like me. I like to go ride and drink, so I can be a bar hopper. You know, you got the long distance traveling people. You got the the people that want to go and party in different you know concerts and and rallies. You got different people with different needs. Okay. So it all depends where you want to do. Ah, yeah, I got like. My oldest customer, and by the time I was working in the motorcycle industry, right now I think he's 92 years old. He's still riding two wheels. Really? And every time that he gets a birthday, his goal is like, let me see where I'm gonna go. At least 2,000 miles, wrong trip somewhere. Wow. So that's his, you know, getaway. Damn. So like I said, oh, the different riders got different goals. Yeah. So, so. Do you do the whole first of the year thing? Um, yeah, we try to. That's kind of like a myth. That's kind of like a, a good vibe for you to okay. do like a ride as soon as New Year's. Right. They say if you do a little ride, your riding season is going to be good. No, nothing's going to break down in your bike. You know, we got some some thoughts too as a biker community. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 I'm, I'm lost. Okay, so just it's like a vela. Whenever you Catholic and say, I'm going to pray for, for a good girlfriend, and you put a vela on you. <laughs> <laughs> Not the same thing at all. So it's like a New Year's resolution. It's like a, a, it's, a it's, yeah, it kind of is. It's kinda just a, a way, but to a get your time. year started off on the right it's foot. Like, like a Chinese it's superstition. Year. Chinese New Year's has like a superstition. Like uh, it's, there's like the 27th of January or some shit, and they have like a weird fucking thing they do, and it's supposed to give you good hope through the year or some shit. Like well, that's basically yeah, what it means. Yeah. You, you, it's. You they say they gotta. You have to ride that first on the first of January. It gives you good juju and shit. Basically, yeah. oh, but one year so. when I had my bike, it was colder than shit outside. <laughs> oh, trust me. <you. laughs> oh, that's <laughs> winter. Yeah, that's, that's like, like the first. middle. Of winter, yeah, it, bro. it was like cold as shit. I was like, I guess if I ride around the block, it'll be good luck. Yeah. So I did it, and I was like, that's stupid. <laughs> Not stupid that it's good luck, but it was stupid that I went out there. I was just like, this sucks. Yeah, they got different superstitions. You know, they got the. Uh, I don't know if have you seen the belt that we carry on the Yeah, road? if you you got like when you get your bike someone's supposed to gift you like a yeah, little belt. Yeah, supposed to be a gift so it can work. Yeah, so my ride. buddy had gifted me a little belt too and I tried to give Paul me a belt but I don't have a bike so he didn't take it. You can put it in the Oh bicycle. wait, it's got to be from a person that has a bike. Has a bike I believe. No, it has to be for a person that like if you bought a bike you can have no, your own belt. No, no, I know, but oh, do I have to have shit. a bike to buy you no, one for your bike? No. It just has to be a gift. Oh, it's, 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 See, I was going to give it to him, but somebody's like, nah, you can't, you don't have a bike. Oh. Well, I got a bicycle. Uh, well, that's I mean, it would, it would make sense if that was a thing. Like, why yeah, would you give me that gift yeah, if you don't even have a bike? Give it to him. It was <laughs> my belt was from a guy that has a bike, so no, it was I, like, okay, cool. I haven't heard of that, but 
I don't all know. The, all, the, all, the, all the years I've been writing, as soon as somebody gives you, it's usually your significant other or the guy who helped you to pick up that bike or whatever. Gangster. It's just like, you know, there you go. Be safe out there. It was not any of those people. It was just a buddy of mine. All I know is... <laughs> but he, 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 he knew his shit. I sat there for five Fucking hours with my homie to get a fucking Harley, bro. I was sitting Oh, yeah, you were pissed. definitely the person to give him a I gun. was pissed, bro. Where you went? <laughs> fucking champion. Oh. You didn't go to this guy. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> he had a fucking homie there. He wasn't a homie because goddamn motherfucker took forever, bro. That's sitting. too funny. Sorry, bro. I'm going to go at 12. It's cool. All right. We didn't get out there till like 6, bro. But buying anything with that substantial of an amount of money... It takes a long time. It was There's a, a lot it's of, a process. It was, yes. a, it was a most. It was brand new. Only one of one in the fucking store. Yeah, but it still it, it, it takes store. it takes oh a God. lot of like background credit checks, getting Next. approved, do, uh, legal documents. It's like at a that, lot. At it's that a moment, I was like, I might as well get a fucking bike at this rate. Yeah, I might as well. Two for one. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was probably didn't walk out of there with it's the one if you were was, already there. So I was sitting there for like five hours. No, that's how it goes. Even if you bought a used car, it's going to take that long because it yeah. just is a process. A lot of people think it's like in and out like Walmart. Like, let me go self-check and that's it. No, you can't. You can't. <laughs> I mean, you could avoid it if if you got a buddy that knows what he's doing and you can give him all the information. Hell yeah. Yeah. See, like, <laughs> you got that guy like, here's this, here's this. Like, you take care of it. I need a four-wheeler, bro. I need a four-wheeler. But, nah, I really want me another bike. But I don't... I'm not... Th- how can I put this? Soft tail is not my type of bike. And that's what I learned. It's like, that's not my bike. There's a bike called like a, like a bobber. I think it's called a bobber. I like that type of style of Harley. Like that's more me. And so that's what I've been kind of looking into is I, I've been talking about it. Like I miss my bike, but I think cause I, I got a lot of time. <laughs> I blew it away. So you mentioned that your girlfriend now has started uh, a female, a female motorcycle only group. Yeah. motorcycle group. Female only motorcycle riding group. Okay. So all females. Okay. Females, 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 females. No, no, no guys. No guys, and they just barely. And and so in order for them to be, I guess like established, do they have to have a certain number of people, or when can they talk to? Like, who do they talk to about being official? Because don't you have to be somewhat official? Yeah, yeah. We, we, we talked earlier. We talked that you have to go to the dominated club. Okay. So they do the same thing. They're, they're not excluded because of their females. Okay. They have to find their members. They have to be riding together for a certain time. Then they go and talk to whoever they need to go talk to. Then they give them the approval. It's like, okay, yes, you're approved to be a club. Okay. You know, so they it's the same steps that we took. Right. Same state that they take. Okay. They show the female version. Huh. That's pretty interesting to think that they have to they have to make sure that they've been writing for a long time though, right? Like what's uh, just uh, enough time to know each other how you write. Okay. Because most of your club excuse me. Most of your clubs they write staggered. Right. They write like next to each other. So if you don't have the trust, you don't know what this guy's gonna do or this girl's gonna do and you guys can clip each other. Yeah, that was so yeah, most of the most of the clubs they do that. Like I said, a lot of different clubs they have different rules, but most of your clubs they write like that, side to side. That's how you actually start bounding with your brother, because I would not do nothing that is gonna put this guy in jeopardy, and you he's not gonna do nothing. Hardcore. Dude. I didn't know what you're gonna turn. And he's not gonna do nothing that's gonna put me in jeopardy. You know. So if I trust you, or if you trust your own brother. You, if you do a turn, you do this. If you're going to do something that you, you, you feel that you're not comfortable enough, then you can step back and let it let it take the whole road. But it's up to your adjustment. If you think you're a bad husband, boom, you're going to be like that. And so do you have a brother that you're cool with it? Like well, it? by his vice. Most of my brothers, we've been riding, because we've been established for 12 years. almost 12 years. So most of my brothers, I, I trust them enough that we can ride like that everywhere we go okay. in town or, or, or out of town okay. but like the new riders they're coming up they, you know it's, it's good to know that's what the the hang around prospect the hang around in the prospect stage is so you guys can know how they ride what's the experience riding how long they've been riding so you get 
to trust them whenever it's time for you to go next to him. Because sometimes you can be in the front of the line, or sometimes you can be in the middle or in the back. So depending on the situation, you may you may have to ride next to this guy. So even the new guy, the prospect, the hanging around, you may got into a spot that you're gonna be riding with him, so you're gonna have to coach him in the same way that he's learning. Huh. Oh, dang. So is there, after you, because you're like the president and the vice president, is there a, like a, a lineup? Everything goes by the lineup. Everything goes by chain of command, like military. Okay. You got your SARS, you got this and that. So the clubs that's, that have their positions too. Club president, vice president, sergeant arms, vice uh, secretary, treasurer, road captain, you know, and so on and so on. They got a chain of command. They got like what they call a round table. Mm -hmm. So that's how they go. Oh, okay. They're patch members. Damn. Then prospects, then the last one's going to be hang arounds because we don't know how they write. Right. So they go in the back. Okay. So Damn. once you once you step, they step up to a prospect, then you start seeing, oh, yeah, I seen how they write us hang around. Then let's put them here, let's put them there. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's how they start going to uphill. Huh. That's the hang around seem like they just need not to hang around. <laughs> 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 Get your ass. No, it, I don't know. It's it seems it, like you said almost militant. It's like a job almost. Oh. I feel like not necessarily with the work part, but the like you got to get the structure is yes. It's like you got to get get it all right. Yeah, the structure is and it's it's for your own safety. Right. It's nothing that, oh, I've got more balls than you. No, it's just for your safety. It's to have fun and to enjoy riding and, and, and to have structure. Damn. Damn. I don't know, man. You, you, I got to give you credit for, I don't know the number, but I'm sure it's a big number because I've seen a lot of you mofos out there. <laughs> <laughs> My thing is, how do you have to determine nickname? Oh, the thing is, it's funny, you know, because either you already have a nickname when you be coming in the club, or you fucked up somewhere in the prospect stage that we're gonna fucking say, hey, motherfucker, you're cheap, cheap, whatever, whatever fucking nickname we come across. <laughs> you know, it can be on a drunk night that you say you fall off or you do something stupid, then there's your nickname. So is it more of a you guys give it to them or can someone, like, let's say I'm new, I'm just like, hey, this is my fucking nickname, and then. Um, <laughs> there's some different, like, in our club, we give you a chance to pick up a nickname oh, shit. and if, if we give you a, a time frame if you don't come up with a time frame nickname then whenever you fucked up we give you the nickname <laughs> or if you come up with a nickname that we don't like and you fucked up in a party or when you say something different or something happened you don't have to fuck up about it something funny comes out of your mouth or whatever boom that's your nickname yeah so it, it goes both ways well, I'm glad I got a nickname so there you go. <laughs> Whatever. You got a nickname, John? I don't have a nickname. I, I think I What's was... What's your nickname? Ben 10, bro. Ben 10? Yeah, well. They call him Ben 10. They call me Ben 10. What's that? Ben 10? Ben 10. What is Ben 10 for? Well, if I told you, then it wouldn't be a secret, bro. I can't tell you that. <laughs> oh, shit. Now we're in the club business now. <laughs> <laughs> See, I know how the club works. So man. does everybody get a nickname? Or what? Is there anybody that just has their no. name as their name? Everybody gets a nickname. Everybody. Well, you, gotta, you don't have a nickname. We're going to give you one by the end of the show. No, we're not. I think so. Yeah, we're no, going to give good. you one. Yeah, we're going to give you one. You want to wear that Harley shirt? You're going to get a nickname. We're <laughs> a pinup girl, dog. We're going to give you one. That's how it works. No. I don't know, man. The world of motorcycles is a lot more complex than I think a lot of people really, really understand. I think if you don't know anything, then I you have a lot, a lot to learn. And, and that's what I suggest to the, to the people out there, you know. If you have questions, feel free to ask. Like, in our part, in the Sagarero's motorcycle group, come and ask us. You know, don't get, don't get discouraged. Don't get afraid, you know. Like I said, even if people talk bad shit about our group, you know, don't go to what they say. Come and ask us or come and hang out with us. I invite anybody. You don't have to like the club. You don't have to ride a bike. You want to you wanna say, hey, get guy, where's the next event? Oh, we're going to do a fundraiser for so-and-so. Come and hang out with us. 
you don't have to have a bike to come and support the events that we do. You know, that way you can separate the rumors from the actually truth. Right. Because like I said, there's a lot of haters out there. And that's anywhere. It can be a car club, it can be a motorcycle club, it can be a gang, it can be a charity, it can be a franchise, whatever. You got haters no matter what. But it's up to you to see the difference. Okay. You know, if you, if you like I said, if somebody talks shit about Guerreros, hey, come and hang out with us. And you make your own judgment. Right. That's what I encourage people to do. Because like I said, we might be the one of the oldest club in town, so we might have the two opinions. We might have the people that like us, and we might have the people that don't like us. So make your own judgment out of that. Okay. No, I think that's a good way of putting it is... I don't know. People do. Everybody hates on everything. Like <laughs> you're, wrong, you're, yeah, you're gonna have haters. You're gonna have people that support you. People that don't even care one way or the other. True. Like it's just all my suggestion is is be a little bit more aware of your riders. Yeah. That's my only thing because just because you don't ride a bike doesn't mean you have to be careless to those that enjoy riding a bike because i think that's a common I thing because i think everybody knows somebody that rides a bike and right it would be a tragedy if something happened to that person. oh this town is so small people ride bikes left and right yeah i feel I, like there's a lot more people riding now i've seen a, I like, a lot i feel like i see people riding way way more now whenever, i don't know whenever i started working in the company that i was working selling bikes uh I was like, how in the world am I going to make a living? This little town is 50 minus people in town. How in the world am I going to make a living? And I did that for 14 years and sold bikes to Everybody. several people. I was like, Bob, everybody rides a bike, but you don't see them out there. A lot of people ride them to, 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 or a lot of people buy bikes just to have them. A lot of people buy bikes just to do a weekend. It's not necessary to have to join a, a club like we were talking about. Right. It's sometimes it's like you got lawyers, you got doctors, you got people out there that, you know, that's the getaway. And, and it's, it's cool. It's cool. No, you're right. I mean, I was kind of that. That's, well, I don't know. I bought my bike with the intent of keeping it, but then I wasn't doing much to it. So I was like, eh, let someone else enjoy this bike. I'll end up getting me another bike, which I intend on doing. I just don't know when that day will be, but... Yeah, he's going to be riding a bike. I'm going to ride a four-wheeler. See, there's different... i got friends that do a lot of off-roading. Okay. Like, right now, the new area is uh, uh, side-by-sides because they're oh, street yeah. legal, yeah. and you still can do a lot of stuff off-road. Right. i got one of my friends, Luis Torango, a very good friend of mine, and he used to be belong to the club. Okay. Now he's making his own little group to go and do a lot of camp out trips. Oh, He's nice. doing a lot of off-road riding. You know, he has a big group of 16, 17 people out there. Oh, wow. They share the same passion of uh, exploring the, the fields. Wow. You know, and, and that's cool. That's a different area. That's a different feel, but the same enjoyment. You know, you're still, you're still bonding with somebody. You're still bonding with friends. You still have the same passion of side by sides or dirt bikes or four wheelers like he says or side by sides you know but it's still a bun at the end i think it's like you're looking for a bun that makes sense that does make sense you have those people that are on on board with you that you may not have known otherwise till you started something yeah and so you get that bond and you start building a group and now look at them they're doing their own thing that's different from a lot of people you know that's cool Hmm. I don't know if I could do the four wheel and dirt bike thing. I could. I mean, I think I don't like the open fields, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why I don't like it. I fucking just by yourself. Just I think that's for people in the oil fields. They like to be in the boonies. Hey, you take a ride on the that 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 cow right here, then three miles door and three miles that way is like <laughs> I don't do that shit. Just <laughs> put me on the road. I feel like I like I don't like that shit. Like, I like going off road. I like going off road in cars. Shit that's not supposed to go off-roading. Oh, shit. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, you're a daredevil, dude. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even think you care. You just want to get off the road. I don't like being on the road at all. I feel like I don't deserve to be on the road. I'm, I'm, I'm down. <laughs> okay, so we'll end on this note. You said you had little kids. You have kids, not little kids. Yeah, right? I got four kids. Okay. So we do this segment with people that are parents. 
we tell them envision your kids watching this maybe whenever this comes out or if they're young or older whenever give them a bit of advice that you want them to take maybe you've learned something in your life or maybe it's a lesson you want them to remember something that you want them to take from you for the rest of their lives damn that's tough i could go hours for that you know i love my kids i can mention the names if you want, that's it. Okay, I got my my oldest son is Mario. Then my I got two daughters by the name of Mariel and Milka. Then my youngest son shares the passion of the motorcycle with me. His name is Jorge as well. Um, I can tell you, you know, do what you want. Do what it passions you. If it's not hurting nobody, you know, don't make something that's gonna hurt people, parents you know family or whatnot do what you actually want try everything like i told my kids try every sport you can to you fit the way the one you want to continue doing you know and just don't get in trouble you know drugs are out there it's impossible to tell you not to do it but it's as a parent says don't try it because it's, it's at the end it's going to hurt you or hurt your family so try to do as positive things you can, and uh, try to be as positive you can. You know, but try it. Don't limit yourself. You know, you want to try to explore life. Go for it. You want to go uh, off roading. You want to go motorcycle. You want to do uh, skydiving. Try to do as much as you can, so you can experience life. By the time you, you're old enough that you want to settle, at least you experiment or you try stuff that you haven't done in the past but always keep it safe and it's like all the parents I, I don't want to put you in a bad spot I don't want you to use drugs you know uh, to me that's it no drugs and, and, and enjoy life you can you can have adrenaline in a different way you can have adrenaline racing a car dirt bikes my kid did dirt bike before he did bull riding he's only 14 years old he did dirt bikes already, he tried bull riding, you know, he tried boxing, all the sports you can think about it. So try to do that adrenaline before you go to something that's gonna hurt your family and hurt yourself. That's, I can tell my kids to do that. That's a, that is a good one, I'm that not gonna lie, because so you're funny. right, because adrenaline is something that a lot of people try to capture. Yeah. And you nailed it on the head, man. I'm not going to lie. That's a fucking that was good, a good one. Not, no one's ever said that. No, nah, no one has. And I had not even thought about that. So good job, man. I appreciate yeah, that. I used to say my own, like, blueprints to tell my kids what the fuck. I'm like, yo, no adrenaline rushes unless it's with me. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to live with that and nothing. <laughs> I know. I'm not boring. Yeah. My kid tried bull riding. And it was fun because he tried dirt bike whenever he was, like, five years old. And whenever, uh, actually the church on Dexter, they call it Cowboy Church or something like that, good pastor, and uh, he let him do the derp, the bull riding. And he was probably like six or seven years old, bro. And he's like, Dad, I don't want to try bull riding. I was like, cool, go for it. Whatever your sport is, whatever, you know, something is going to be fun for you, I'll support it. Oh, yeah. And he did that. And he did a couple of laps. One time he landed on his back completely flat he's like catching breath it's like dad this shit really hurts man can we try it next day because i don't feel like doing it again today it's like we start laughing and everything <laughs> like cool we'll try it whenever you want you know just try whatever you will decide to do if it's fun that's what's up i never bull ride uh, that sounds extreme i never bull ride i've seen somebody bull ride that have you ever rode a horse yeah, I rode a horse. No, yeah, I rode a ho one horse. That shit hurt it. That did not feel good. It hurt, dude. That shit did not feel good, bro. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we appreciate you, man. Thank you again. Oh, thank you for the invite. For sure. I, I'm best of luck for you guys and your, your, your group. I won't call it a gang. No gang. No, no gang. gang. His group, you know. Can I join? <laughs> go hang out. Get, get, get your bike. Get, get your, your bike. Just go hang then out. We'll talk. <laughs> then you'll talk. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Please like, please subscribe. Again, go cop your shirt. Link in the description. Go buy you one. Support locally. I mean, press that subscribe button. Get us to 500. We're almost at the 100th video. We got like 
I think less than four weeks left and we're going to be at 100. So please help us out. We appreciate you. We love you. Until next time with the Beard Bros. Peace.